all over the place in math and physics you come across a particular integral, specifically the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared. This is called the Gaussian integral because it's simply the integral over the whole x-axis of a simple Gaussian. And it turns out that you can actually use simple calculus techniques to get the analytical value of that integral. But exactly how you do that is perhaps not obvious. You can't just simply write down the antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. There isn't a way to do that in terms of simple functions. So if you want to use elementary calculus techniques to get the analytical solution, you need to be a bit more clever. And the cleverness you can use to do this integral is actually really entertaining. And it's the type of cleverness that makes math fun. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that integral. Here follows the math section. This is the famous Gaussian integral. This is the integral we want to do. And because you can't just simply write out an antiderivative, doing this integral is definitely not obvious. But it turns out you can still do it with nothing but the skills you would learn in an elementary calculus class. So let's take a look at just what cleverness allows us to pull off this integral. It turns out that if you square it, and then change coordinates on the integral, you can actually arrive at an integral that's doable. So first, we can rewrite this square simply as this product of integrals. There's nothing stopping us from doing this, because the variables we're integrating over are dummy variables, so we can change their name all we want. This thing still equals the same thing that it did when we still used x as the label for the integration variable. But the cool thing about doing it this way is then we can multiply it through like this, and then change to polar coordinates. And that transition to polar coordinates is what ultimately actually allows us to do the integral. This is the definition of the polar coordinates. We can easily calculate the Jacobian, and we find that the area element that we need to be integrating over in polar coordinates is r d r d theta. So if we insert that into the integral, we immediately see we have an integral that we can do. We can do the theta part immediately because there's no theta dependence in there. That's easy. We just get a 2 pi. And then the radial part we can do using u substitution. If we pick u equal to negative r squared, then du equals negative 2r dr, which ultimately gives us this. Then we can flip the integration bounds to absorb the minus sign, which gets us here. Then we can take the antiderivative and plug in the bounds, and we ultimately get pi. So that means the square of the integral that we wanted is equal to pi. But that, of course, tells us that the integral we want is just the square root of pi. And there you go. That's how you do the Gaussian integral. Isn't that spectacular? I think it's enormously fun. I don't know why anyone else wouldn't. It's this kind of cleverness, this kind of really cool, epic cleverness that makes math so much fun. So now you have seen how to cleverly take advantage of a change of coordinates to do the Gaussian integral. You simply square it and then notice something interesting about the exponent when you do. And that is that the exponent turns into the square of the radial polar coordinate, and when you transform the integration measure, it turns out that the Jacobian is exactly what you need it to be in order to make a u substitution work out. You can do that u substitution and then analytically do the integral, and then just take the square root, and there you go, you've got it. It's really cool. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.